he was, it was basically just building the foundation or trying to, to connect with what the Old Testament, what the, pop, the apostle, what the prophet was talking about in the Old Testament and what he had to fulfill in the New Testament. It was all about relationship. It's all about a relationship. And as we deal start this, this uh, series of lessons for the next three, next six weeks, that we'll be on talking about. Listen to the John Denner said, we are created to live in relationships with others. No man is an island. And as we look at our current situation, that's why a lot of people, I feel a lot of people is going haywire now because they are all isolated and they are not interacting with others. It's a endowed, God has given us an, an endowed uh, spirit to connect or have relationships with one another. As he stated in Genesis 2 and 18, and the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. So from the very beginning, God desires us to be in relationships with one another, to have a bond between one another. But as we know, why, why we have this desire and zeal to be connected with one another, we always find ways to mess it up. <laughs> so that's going to be our focus today, dealing with messy relationship. And, and we think about it, why is it we always find ways to mess up relationships? It's basically because of three things. We're all sinners. As Romans 3 and 23 said, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And also, we're self-centered and disobedient. And 2 Timothy 3 and 2 says, For men shall be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient, ungrateful, and unholy. So these are the some reasons why we are always finding ways to mess up our relationship. You know what? But Christ have called us those who are called by my name, Christ have called us to and empower us to live differently. There, that is why for the next six lessons, we're going to be going and be teaching six different traits we can practice and that can be bring healing to our relationships. Even decreasing the, 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 the loneliness or the messiness that we have in our relationships. So let's get into our lesson. Hope you have your lesson book with you. If you don't, you can pull out your Bible because we're going to be going over some scriptures today. Okay, the question is, what food do you like best straight out of the oven? Think about that. What food? Do you like best straight out of the oven? And as you think about that, it's probably something that you love, really love. My favorite thing is lemon pound cake. A lemon pound cake. I can eat that thing right out of the oven. Don't need to add nothing to it because I love it just the way it is. Now, as we, talk, as we get into our lesson today, we're going to talk about love. Love. And I thought love is the foundation on which all relationships are built. Without love, you have nothing. Love is the foundation in our marriages. Love is the foundation in our friendship. Love is the foundation in our relationship with our workers, work, our co-workers. Love is the foundation that we should have for one another. And of course, love is the foundation of which relationship are built on with Jesus Christ. So as we go through our lesson today, our lesson is going to be coming from John 15, 9 through 14. Now, as we start our lesson, the, 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 point, the point is tell us, love, let love permeate every relationship. 
what that mean is that we got to allow love to work through every relationship we have. That means it got to be soaked, dwelled in, in every relationship we have. And without it, it is dry. Think about a, a, a sponge. When, and when you first get a sponge, it is dry. But when you put it into, into water, it, that, that water is permanent. That, that sponge is permeated with the water. It is soaked through. And that is how love is to be in our relationship. It should soak through us. Even when we're wringing out, what come out of us is love. When we speak, what come out of our mouth is love. When we act, what come out of our, our actions is love. So that is we're going to be our focus today is love. Help me. Keep, keep me calm. Now, I'm not I'm getting like pastor now. I'm trying to hold it together. Coming up first time. Now, as we talk about getting to our scripture lesson, let me give you a little background. A little, let's get the setting set up here. Now, Jesus and his uh, disciples, or apostles, and 11 of them are remaining in the upper room. On John 5th, they John and John 15. They have stayed in the upper room. He has already washed his disciples' feet. They have already consumed the, the, the uh, Passover supper. And Judas had left to betray, betray Jesus. But while they were sitting in the upper room, Jesus going to teach his disciples the final and the most important lesson that they are to know as they start their journey. Jesus is going to teach them the importance of loving one another. So as we start our lesson, in that love is not in word only. That love is in our action. We should permeate a chauffeur's love, not in words, but in our action. As you know, it's in your listen through, uh, go through the word scripture in the New Testament. Jesus said these words, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. That means they were talking love, but their action did not display love. So as we speak love, we are to be love. Amen? Amen. Keep, keep me up here. Now, as we start our lesson in John 15, uh, 9 and 10, let us read like this. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now, remain in my love. If you love if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. You know, John, love tells us love for others is to be grounded and rooted in God's love. Our love for others is to be rooted and grounded in God's love. It got to be that oak tree of God's love. As you see, as Jesus was talking to his, his disciples here, he was saying, the love that my father has for me and the love that I have for him, that love you have for me, it's the same love you got to have for one another. So as the Father loved me, I love you. So as you love me, therefore you are to love one another. So you see, that's something that we do. We say, we go about, we say, we love Christ. We love Jesus. We love Jesus. But do you love one another? As you love Jesus. Do you love one another as Jesus love us? Because what Jesus is trying to convey to his, his disciples right here is that the same love that I have for you, you got to have that same love for one another. When you fall or go against me, I love you. When you lie on me, I love you. When you turn your back on me, I love you. When you denounce 
me, and he was talking about, he was talking to Peter on this one. When you denounce me, uh, me, I love you. Now, with one another, when somebody hurts your feelings, do you have a Christ love for them as Christ love you? When somebody scandal your name, do you have the Christ love for them as Christ have love for you? When you walk out a lie, a, 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 a scandal the names of your friends or disown your friends, do you love them as Christ love you? We got to keep it all in perspective. Our love has to be rooted for one another in God's as God's love us. Now let's move on to the, to the next scripture. It says, remain in my love. Now, what that means, that word remain means continue. What he's saying, you have to be continue in my love. Continually in my love. As I love you, I'm going to continue to love you regardless of what you do. Regardless of what you say. I'm going to continue to love you. Because my love will always be continually. Is your love for one another continuing? Or is it predicated on how you act or what somebody are able to do for you? Do we have, see what Jesus is trying to let his disciples know him. You got to have that unconditional love for one another. You got to have that agape love for one another. No matter what someone do to you or what someone say to you or how someone act to you, you got to love them with the unconditional love. Are you with me today? Christ is saying to his disciples, that love that I have for you is continually. And the love you have for one another has to be continually. That means remain in my love. Now, we, as we move on to verse 10, it said, if you keep my commandments, let's stop right there. If you keep my commandment, let's define that word keep. Now, what Christ is saying to his disciple when he said keep his commandment, he is saying he wants you to watch. All that he has taught you, all that the prophets have said in the Old Testament, he wants you to observe. Keep an eye on it. Keep it in the forefront. As you have this, as you build this relationship with one another. And the most important thing, he wants you to grab hold to it. Grab hold of those commandments, those decrees that I have given to you. Make those the commandments and decrees a part of you. Make those commandments and decrees you. That is why we are called Christians. We are called Christ's like. We are to look like Christ. We are to act like Christ. And Christ is the epitome of love. That means when we grab hold to it, when we make it us, when we make it our own, the Christ love that we have built within us, that means it will pour out. It will permeate from us onto our brothers and sisters as we love one another. I hope you can see that back there. Love one another. Keep his commandment. Grab hold of it. Make it a lifestyle. Make it who you are. Christ like Christians. Now, as we move on to our next, next lesson, next word here, John 15, 11 and 12. He said, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, that your joy may be complete. My commandments is this. Love each other as I have loved you. The word love here is love for others is to be the mirror of Jesus in us. Our love for others should reflect Jesus in us. 
Paul said we are to be imitators of Christ. So, in order to imitate something, now, uh, uh, you know, as I stand up here and try to imitate the pastor, that means I should look something like him. I should sound something like him. So, as our love for one another, it should mirror the action and the words of Christ. As we interact with one another, as we embrace one another, when we see, when people see us, they should see Christ that dwells within us. That's, that's why I say love is the foundation of all relationships. Paul also, also said, I can speak with the tongue of prophecy, but I, if I don't have love, I am like a sounding cymbal. I'm just making a lot of noise. If we don't have love for one another within our relationship, we're just walking around one another. We're just hanging out with one another. We're just standing there looking at one another with no type of feelings or anything at all. We are not doing or accomplish anything if we don't have love. And, 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 and um, the word tells us saying, I have told you this so that my joy will be in you. Think about it. Think about this. If we walk around and speak with the love and our action of Christ, the thing about the joy that we will have, that's, think about it. That's all we have. Just think of the joy that we will have. There will be no bickering. Why? Because, you know, let me, let, me, let me step on right here. You know, my wife over tell me, said, always says that I don't think I've never seen Michael meet a person he didn't like. But let me tell you sometimes. There are sometimes I really want to be angry with some people. I really want my, you know, that, 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 that second nature of me want to be angry with some people. I mean, really upset. Get off at them. But for some reason, I just can't hold on to it. Me and my wife get upset with one another. In a few seconds, it's over. Done. And she upset for me because I'm so happy. I'm, I'm just, why are you, 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 why are you so happy? You got to be angry. But the thing about that, that's the love that Jesus in us is coming out. Because... Think about it. Jesus is being hauled up to the car, hauled off to the to the, all the courthouses. And Peter is you no know, lagging behind him. And 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 and, and someone comes and says, Hey, aren't you one of those? One aren't you one of the disciples? Peter got all out raped. And Jesus heard him. He looked at him. And they think how Christ felt if he if he'd been in 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 in, in, our, in our nature in, in the human nature in 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the second nature the nature that we were born into how you think you run responded but he didn't he didn't because as we know when christ risen one of the first disciples he went to was peter and restored him but that's the same type of love we got to have for one another. That is the, the same type of, 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 of joy that Christ is putting within us. If we just love one another the way Christ loved us. As the Father loved me, I so love the Father. If Christ loved us, we also got to love one another. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Verse 12, he said, this is my commandment that you love one another. Now, what Christ is saying here is not an option, guys. It's not an option. Christ is telling us 
You don't have no, you, you don't have an option. You have no choice. You have no choice. You got to love one another. But see, when he tells us that, he don't want to, he don't want to, he don't want to sound like he a commander, you know, or, or calling down on, he's going to chop you down because he wants you to do it out of love. As I love, as I love the father, as the father loved me, I'm going to love him. Even though, and bring this out, even though it pleases the father that he be bruised. Even though it pleases the father that Christ suffer. Even though it pleases the father that he will be beat beyond recognition of a man. That he will suffer a suffering that no man will ever endure again. But it pleases him, but yet Christ still loved the Father as he loved him. And, 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 and he even said, even he was obedient unto him, even to the cross. And, and, and see, one thing about you have to realize, Christ did not, he was not drugged to the cross. He went on his own to the cross. He willingly went to the cross because of love. He willingly suffered because of love. So when he said my commandment, one commandment, my commandment, this commandment I give you, he said, think about the love. Think about the love. And as you go, as we be confronted with things and issues, pain, suffering, heartache, think about the love. And as we move forward, we'll be able to press through that because we got our eyes on the love. We got our eyes on the prize. Paul say, I press toward the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus, because he compressed to all that anger, disappointments, suffering, heartaches. He compressed through that because his eyes is on Christ. His eyes is in and on the love that was in him. Okay, so it's our, we don't have a choice, but we have a choice. You get that? We don't have a choice, but we have a choice. Amen? Now, John 15, 13, 14. And it reads like this. It says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friend. If you do what I command you to do. Love for others means we go sometime we're gonna have to sacrifice something. We're gonna have to make sacrifices. And what that means is sometimes, especially with my wife, she have to look overlook my not being able to hear her that caused her so, get her so agitated. When she has to repeat thing over and over and over again just to, for me to get it once. That means she's going to have to sacrifice that. Sometimes we got to make sacrifices for the one we love. For us to get over some attitudes. We're going to have to make sacrifices. For we got to get over some how some people just say, this is the, just the way I am. We got to get over some, uh, 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 some traits that people have when we move towards love. We just going to have to do that. We have to make sacrifices. And because they say that no, love, no one has greater love than this, 
No one has greater love than this, and we got to sacrifice for one another. And if we love one another, we will make those sacrifices. Think about the sacrifice that Christ made. When we love one another, we will make sacrifices. No matter what we are confronted with, we will make those sacrifices. So Jesus is saying, you are my friend. And because I love you so much, I am willing to lay down my life for you. Because he loves us so much, he's willing to lay down his life for us. What are you willing to do for one another? What, are, what sacrifice are you willing to make? What are you willing to lay down for one another? What are you going to get ready to demonstrate to one another? And that's what love is all about. It's, not, it's, it's more than just words. Jesus has said, I would demonstrate my love for you by going to the cross. I would demonstrate my love for you by going from court to court to court to court and not saying a mumbling word. I would demonstrate my love for you to being beat down, spit on, talked about, scandalized, beat to a, a, a point where the, where, the, where the flesh was be falling off my bones. I will demonstrate my love for you through this. Now, why can't we demonstrate our love for one another in the same manner? Christ's desire for us is to demonstrate not only in words, but in our action. That same type of love that he demonstrated for us, we are to demonstrate it for one another. So all this bickering, this, this uh, 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 animosity, all this jealousy, all this envy, all this strife that we have for one another, God, Christ has commanded us we got to lay them down. You see, because I love you, I lay down. And we got to willing. And we don't have to be, we shouldn't have to be prompt or, 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 or urge or, or, or press. You, hey, you know, you, you, sh you should forgive your friend. No. That is something that is always we should have in us to lay it down. He say, I'm going to lay down my burdens. Lay them down. Paul tells us in Ephesians to get rid of. There's some things that we have to take off as we deal with or we build this relationship with one another. It's all about love. What love got to do with it? Everything. So as I come to a close, remember, what Christ did for you. All for love. And he desired for us to do the same as we love one another. Remember, Christ loved you so much. Say that as we love one another. Do you love one another so much that they would ever know. Don't forget about our Sunday school offering. If you want to give, we, we our ministry have to go on and, and try God in this. You know, I know we're going through some struggle times right now, but trust God because Christ overcame the world. And he said he's never seen his seed begging for bread. Trust God. So let us pray. Oh God, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord, for your word of love. We thank you, Lord, 
for the sacrifice you made for us, for love. Now, uh, help us, Lord. Empower us that we demonstrate and show forth that same love for one another. So, Lord, as we go forth, we ask you to bless us this day. Keep us in your care. Bless this city. Bless this state. And, Lord, pour out your love upon this world because you say in your word if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land the land is in a need of a healing right now Lord but we are standing on your words as you said we can't see it, but we know you're working. We may not even feel it, but you know you're working. And you said in your words, before we utter the words out of our mouth, you're already working on our behalf. So, Lord God, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Be blessed. And don't forget to, to, to join us in our worship service at 11 o'clock. So have a blessed day and praise God because he is good.